after all we come through. Even their Facebook family. All of you, man, we got it. All of you, we're gonna start in a in a minute. Give some other time to catch up. Good evening, good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Sabrina. I'm Pastor Angela. Hallelujah. And I'm sure you all know Pastor James. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get these on. Uh, trying to get these on. Uh, the sharing part. Started tonight before we dive into the word. Go ahead and share with your Facebook family. Go ahead and share your post. Call oh, someone, Lord. tell them we're ready. Start your watch parties. Let me start mine. Hey, wave and just let us know you're there. Give us a wave on Facebook or just, uh, you know, just say hello. Good evening. We are coming to your live. Everybody have a good evening. Hallelujah. All right, let's go ahead on and let's uh, bow our heads and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We lift you up. We give you glory and honor. We esteem you high. Lord God, we come tonight declaring your kingdom come, your will be done. And the lives of those that are listening to this currently and those who are joining and those who are viewing in the future. Lord God, we pray tonight that every eye will be open to see what your word is showing us. Your Every ear is anointed to hear what the word is speaking to us. And every heart is prepared like that a good soul ready to receive a seed of the word. That seed will be planted, rooted, and grounded. That seed, seed will die and produce a tree, that produce fruit, that produce harvest, that will last from one generation to the next. Now, Father, we pray all of you and all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, lift them up this, this evening, even if it's on your phone and using your phone or whatever. Lift up your Bibles and say this after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I declare. I declare my Bible. My Bible is the living word. It's the living word of my living God. Of my living God. It has the power. It has the power and the authority. And the authority to change my life. To change my life. My life. My life. My future. My future won't be the same. Won't be the same in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Good evening, Sister Amen. Mary Stacy. Good evening, Angela Williams. Amen. Good evening to everybody that's out there that's watching this evening. Um, before we dive into what we was going to uh, talk about, we was coming, you know, with faith. And, um, you know, I want to just say a few things before we, we, we go into that. And ladies, y'all can jump in and, 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 and help me. In the book of Matthew, in the 22nd uh, chapter, Jesus has asked the question about what is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, they're talking about the law of Moses. And Jesus said that the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. And he said the second one is just like it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And um, this, this kind of hit me when I came home and I was looking at a story on uh, Facebook, not on Facebook, but on uh, Yahoo, it was a news story, and the Lord began to speak to me. When we look at this coronavirus, this coronavirus is just like the enemy. He has no boundaries. Doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter your status in society, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter what your skin color looks like, doesn't matter what neighborhoods you, you live in. This is an invisible enemy, just like the devil, that's going in and destroying families, destroying friends. It's taking people out, and it doesn't even care. And now is the greatest time for us to show people how much we love them, how much we care for them as Christians. And it is so important that we love our neighbors. You know, um, 
our son, our oldest son, he's in the military. And um, he was quarantined after coming from a mission in Italy. He got quarantined for 14 days. Well, in that 14 day period, he couldn't leave his house, he couldn't go to the stores. And even when he tried to go, you know, try to get call people to get the supplies they needed, like the most valuable one of them all right now in this season, toilet, toilet, toilet paper, paper. <laughs> he couldn't get none. Mm -hmm. So I we sent him some toilet paper, and then I figured he's gonna need some more. And I was telling him we're gonna see some more toilet paper. But then, you know, we just sent them some and it took over a week to get to him. But he really did something. My wife shared a story with me that really touched me. Me too. I was like, wow, we really trained him up well. Yes, and what, what he did was he went to the store the day before he got the package yesterday and said he had managed to walk down the aisle at Target and he was yeah. able, they had just put out toilet paper and he bought some because he was running low. But then he gets home and the package that we sent him with about 30 rolls of toilet paper in it arrived. So he told his mom what he's going to do is his next door neighbor doesn't have a car. She's always walking. She's an elderly lady. So he was going to see if she needed toilet paper and give him some because he had an abundance now. This is what loving our neighbors is all about. It's not about dollars. It's not about status. It's about displaying the love of God to people, especially the people that are in need. And at this time, we need each other. We're better together. Yes. It's time to put down black and white. It's time to put down, you know, the haves and the have nots. Because right now, all of us want to live. Baptist or Pentecostal or all, that doesn't all, None of that doesn't matter. religion is. God said love. That's it. He said love. And I mean, people, you know, we got our governmental uh, figureheads who's trying to reopen this country. We don't know if we've seen the worst of this enemy yet. So this is the reason why we have to stay in faith, but we also have to obey the recommendations, the rules, and the laws in the land. And right now, when I read this story on Yahoo about this lady who was a caregiver, she was in the hospital working, treating people, and ended up in the hospital herself, and then she just died. It brought tears to my eyes as I think about this because all these people out here going to work putting their lives on the line for us. It hurts. It hurts. And it bothers me that people are so consumed with things that are not as important now as these people out here that's at work and their family members are losing them to this invisible enemy. We make jokes and stuff, but this thing is real. These people are laying down their lives so that we can enjoy the necessities and things of life that we're enjoying, but we're not thinking enough about God's children that are standing on the front line and they want to reopen this country and this state. It hurts, y'all. I can't apologize for my tears because these are my brothers and sisters that I have died putting their lives on the line every single day, and it hurts. So we have to love. Love means going beyond what you will usually do. Love would be saying hello and thank you to those people who are putting their lives on the line every day for our comfort and our convenience. I'm sure uh, many of them want to be home with their families, but out of unselfishness, they're there working in the stores, they're in hospitals, they're driving cars, they're policing, they're riding in the ambulance, they're the CNAs, the custodial staff, the um, food service industry. They're just people who are doing their everyday normal. And because it's so normal, so many times we take it for granted that they should be doing it. Well, we all should be doing what we should be doing, but we're on. And we can't say because their job made them do it or their supervisor may, may, may have made them do it. What if they all just say, we're going on strike. We're not doing it anymore. We're not taking your trash away from your home. We're not opening up stores. I, the store may open, but I'm not going to be there to work. 
what would we do? What would we do? We would think they're, that they are wrong for not being there to serve us. And many times some of us go in there complaining that the lines are too long. Or I don't like how they didn't smile at me. We really have to get it together. Really have to get it together. And it's not everybody else. Many times it's us also. Christians and non-Christians. We really going to have to get it together and love people. Love don't mean you have to give them a hug. But common courtesy is do everybody. I mean, how much does it hurt you to say thank you to these people that are out here? You know, when you go to the grocery store, you know, does it hurt to say thank you for coming to work today? God bless you. You know, when you're at the gas station, does it hurt to say thank you? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about this, this this nurse. She was 30 years, 33 years old right here in Wellington, Florida, who died last week, a week before, with a young child. Now that child is without a mother. You know, thinking about the police officers who have lost their lives or, or the correctional officers in it. And, you know, they're in here with these inmates. And, you know, you come across these different people, and we don't know. We don't know this thing is worse than the flu. There's not a vaccine. They're trying stuff. That's the team. I'm, I'm, I'm just... I think we all can uh, do a love check on our own self. All we have to do is think back over what we did today or yesterday just to check in your own heart to see where you are. And if it's not you... Then you pray for everyone else who may be having issues. Yeah. And the word do say pray uh, through love. Through love. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we we do get caught up in our own yeah. selfishness. Because we're, we're thinking about yeah. me, my four, yeah. and no more. Me, myself, and I. My family. My house. What I need. And many times we don't even think about our neighbors next door or what they may need. I mean, do you realize what blessing you have? This thing does not hit your house. It has not hit your family. Amen. Do you realize how blessed you are that God is covering you and keeping you under the blood of Jesus and somebody else is standing in the gap for you? You know, like when God told me to, to, to do this prayer, and, and you know, and, and it's like, I pray and I'm praying different things, but at the same time, I'm thinking about these people out here whose families are, these people are dying alone. Yeah, their their, their loved ones can't go in the hospital, home. can't go nowhere uh, and, and see them while they're going through this. They're going through this by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the flu, it be you can go in the hospital, they're going to give you something. Your family could still come and see you. But with this enemy, with, with the coronavirus, can't nobody be in the room with you. You enter that hospital, you're by yourself. You're there dying without a, a, a loved one or, or a friend or a church member by your side. You're by yourself. Can you imagine how hard that is? Some of us, we don't like to be by ourselves for, in our own houses and stuff. Imagine laying up in a hospital and you can't talk. Nobody there to hold your hand. And then, yeah, none of that. Isn't by themselves because you can't gather. You can't even have a funeral. You know, and, and you know, and, and, and I'm not trying to be emotional, but I love people. You need to think. This is and, yeah, and, and this thing, it really hurts because I'm watching, you know, people right around here, you know, like 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 the cafeteria workers at the schools in Palm Beach County. You know, they, they at first they didn't even have masks and stuff, but they was handing out food. You don't know who's coming up, up to get this stuff. You don't know who you're walking in the grocery store beside. You don't know who just you touched that uh, handle at the gas pump. Or picked up that carton of milk at yeah. the grocery store and put it back. And, and it's even like I was looking at this thing about this uh, doctor in the hospital. You know, he gets home and like his young son, his little two-year-old son, tried to run up and give him a hug. He had to tell his wife to keep him back because he has to decontaminate himself before dealing with his family. So, you know, so these are the things that I'm talking about. And, and you know, I was all set to talk about faith, but God was pulling on my heart to talk about loving our neighbors. And y'all, we have to keep praying for our God to do the impossible. We have to keep praying.
praying for our God to cover and protect those on the front line. Cover and protect you and your family. Cover and protect your friends. Your Even pray for your enemies. Because it'll be a sad thing if somebody you knew used to be good friends with, y'all had a falling out about something stupid, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you found out coronavirus just took them out. And what y'all fell out about wasn't even important. Yeah, my, my son talked to my wife uh, um, this morning about that. He had a friend. His mom died alone. But he had a friend that died who they fell out about something so stupid. I, I, I just don't want that to happen. And, oh, man, I'm disconnected. Hallelujah. All right, no very soon. I know we had a pause there, y'all. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I want to go to another thing, and then we're going to try to jump into this faith thing. But seriously, y'all, go ahead. You don't want to get emotional, but um, compassion. That's what you said. Love the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. In our heart, that's a part of our heart, our emotions. You know, Absolutely. so what you're what you're feeling is the heart of God. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You're always praying and interceding. There is no way you can pray and see like that and not feel the heart of God and not feel what people are feeling. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I don't want us to have respect of persons. And um, if if you have something to say, share share it on Facebook with us, please. Please, I'm going to ask you to share something on Facebook. Let us take a look. Because, you know, I am. How could, here's a question to help you share. How can you show love to a neighbor during this time? Is it anything that you think it's in within your power to do to show love to a neighbor? Not the people that live in your house. Not your family member, although they're your neighbors too, but someone else. It could be a stranger that you don't know. It could be actually your next door neighbor, someone that lives in your neighborhood, or someone you just meet while you're pumping gas or while you're at the grocery store, or while you're at work. Because I'm sure many of you listening, I know I see a couple of names on there who work in the medical industry and you're working in the facilities where their people are sick and you are having to give in and of yourself every day and you have to come home and decontaminate yourself, take care of yourself so you'll be able to take care of your family. So, oh man. Okay, I think oh, I am pulling myself together. I am getting myself uh, together. And uh, I just want to thank y'all for just, you know, um, being patient with us. Because um, this is hard. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. It is it's hard for me as a pastor to watch this. It's hard for me as a police officer to watch this. It's, it's hard for me you know, just as a human being, as a Christian, you know, because in my lifetime, I've never seen something like this happen where our schools are shut down. You know, you, you got limited. I mean, you got place how, how you walk into the grocery store. You know, it, it's different. People just wearing masks. I mean, you can watch it on TV and you see it in another country, but then now it hits home. And when it hits home, it affects you differently. And this virus has affected us differently to where we can't even hold church like we normally hold church. And you never thought, never would think that something like this would ever disrupt the house of God, but it has. But one thing I love, what it has not affected, that just because the, the, yes. the, the, the worship facilities and the buildings may be Amen. limited and closed, church is still going oh, on from the house. It's still going on, pray. you know, out there in the yard. It's Jesus. still going on out there, you know, they haven't, you know, at the drive-in, somebody got church service at the drive-in. We're using social media to get Amen. the word out to encourage people. So I don't want that to stop. So church hasn't stopped because we are the church, the body of Christ. The church is made up of people. And this is, I think, what really touched me is that these are people that are dying. These are genuine human beings out here dying. And this is 
whether I knew them or not, they're still my father's children, our father's children. So that's where I was tonight. That's what's, what was on my heart to pour out, to get out of my heart, to just stop and think, just reflect for a minute and, and give God some thanksgiving and praise because when I pray, and you, you hear me say that if, if you've been listening and you know, you've been praying with me, I pray that no evil will befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. I pray that you're covered in the blood, and but we need to pray together for others. You know, when you get in your alone time, cover this world in the blood. Cover our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our CNAs, your restaurant workers, and all. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus over their life. I was just going to say that, Pastor James. A lot of times we say we're going to pray or we listen to other people pray and we, we think that's enough. That is not enough. We still have to pray on our own. Even though my husband and I pray together, I still have my time when I pray. I pray to cover him. I pray to cover all the pastors and evangelists that I see on Facebook and that I know of because I know the enemy is definitely after the church to attack, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So I am I pray for anyone and everyone. I say, God, if I don't even know their name, I'm praying for those that I come in contact with in the stores, I, not just for the coronavirus, but for their life, that they are saved and serving God and that they know who he is. So when did they come? When they do leave this side and they, they can go on and be with the Lord in heaven. Amen. That's a good point too. That, you know, praying for, like you said, the world. You know, praying for everybody. China, Say Italy, everywhere, everywhere, not everybody. just the United States. Amen. Yeah, because like I said, this this enemy, he just like the devil. But not only do he go around and war, he takes some people out for real. And that's what has happened. This virus. I don't care where it came from. I don't care whether it was human made or God a lot however it's here it's in the atmosphere I'm not going to debate people where it came from it's here. what I want to know is can you stand with me and it's stand flat footed with me that we pray against this Amen. enemy and ask our God Jehovah Rophi the healer Jehovah Rohi our protector Jehovah Shaboa our protector Jehovah Rohi our shepherd to watch over our brothers and sisters and because not all of our brothers and sisters are good, cream Christians like us. Amen. Just like in our normal families, we have brothers and sisters that are bad. Maybe we was one of the bad ones who just got transformed. Some of us still working on transformation. Yes, we still <laughs> working on But yet and still, we need to fight. And we need to pray. You know, people out here worried about when a stimulus check comes. Well, well, you better be focused on to make sure that, hey, this virus don't come not me, my dwelling, my children, my children's children, my mama, my daddy, whoever else. Pray for your pastors too. Intercede for your church members. It's time out for pettiness, y'all. It's time to put petty aside and be real. Whether or not we want to believe it or we want to face it, we're in a, we're in a war. There's a war going on between good and evil. There's a war, and we are soldiers, and I hope you're on my team. We're in the, uh, our soldiers in the army of the Lord. If I knew that song, I'd sing it, but I don't even know what I'm a soldier <laughs> in the army of the Lord. Oh, but we are soldiers. We're in a war, and you have to All decide what side you're on. And once you decide what side you're on, I hope you're on the Lord's side. You got to go to battle, and we can't battle with our hands. Like we say, I'm going to give them these hands. Mm -hmm. We can't give them these hands. We got to give them these words. Mm -hmm. The words from God. That's our battle. And we have to come up with a battle plan. And um, Pastor James, I would call him Captain James or General James, he has come forth in these last couple of uh, week or two, two weeks or so, and he has been forming his own personal squad. Mm -hmm. Is that what they're calling? Mm -hmm. Squadrons. Um, his platoon, and that's us, his battalion, where we are getting ourselves, even though we were praying before, we're getting up like clockwork now. Amen. 
at 7 a.m. in the morning, at 7 p.m. I know you're praying throughout the day that we're talking to God a little more now. We're getting our battle strategies ready because you knew at 7 o'clock tonight, oh, I got to get on because it's prayer time. Guess what we're doing? We're in battle. We're practicing. We're getting warmed up because if it's not the coronavirus that knocks on your door, something is coming. So if you're in a season right now where you think all is well, it very may well be. Either you're going through a storm right now, you're coming out, or you're going in. One of those are going to apply to you. And I'm so grateful that God left this word for us so we don't have to memorize it all. We can go back to the word, and if we use our phone, we can go to many different versions to break it down simply for us. It ain't even read it to you. Just turn it on, press play, and go. Y'all, y'all don't. I don't know if you know. If you've been listening, you you'll pick up on it. But my voice is a little raspy because I've been praying so much. I don't know on Facebook. Uh, my wife told me the other day. As a matter of fact, her and my son told me. Said they asked, said, "Why do you pray so hard?" And said, "You just can't pray when 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 you pray." You you so loud. He's an intercessor. <laughs> I said that's that's just the way I am. Y'all saw one day I, I I tried to sit down and it just wasn't in me to sit down and pray like that. But Wondering it's just that you know I sometimes I just ask God just to give me strength. You know, and I enjoy what I'm doing for the Lord so much, and I want to see people recover from this thing so they can go back home. And be with their families, be with their loved ones who's also suffering with them through this. You know, it's one thing to be there and lose lose mommy, daddy, son, daughter, whatever. But there's a whole nother thing when you can't be there. And they just make a phone call or somebody come by the house and tell you that your loved one passed away. You're talking about a hard pill to swallow. That's bigger than a boulder, than an avalanche. You know, my supervisor, she uh, lost her mother. Uh, she, because of this virus, she wasn't able to see her for like two hours. Yeah. And she lost her mother. And um, so it, it is, it's real. You know, it's, it's different. It's a different type of situation that we're in right now. And it is time to pray. You know, and you was talking play. about that armor. You know, when you, when you, that last part of it said, above all things. Well, even the word, you got mm-hmm. to pray, you got to communicate with God, you got to talk to God, you know, because a lot of times we're reading scripture, but we're reading scripture, but we're not communicating, having that one-on-one relationship with God. We have to pray and have that one-on-one relationship. So as Pastor James begins to show us and teach us the confessions and the word and the Psalms to go to, we have to make that word personal Amen. when you pray. Amen. Talking to Abba Father when you pray. Making it one on one with him, you know, so that when you do pray, it's going to be effective in your life. Amen. And I would say after praying that, or during prayer, after prayer, that we stop and listen Ooh. for the voice of God because prayer is just communicating with the Father. It is not just you telling him what you need him to do, what you want him Amen. to do right now. Do it for me, Jesus. I'm going to pull it down. You can pull it down. But. Amen. You have to listen for the answers. Listen to what God, maybe God is, God is telling us things we need to do because we're his hand and feet. We're his heart be here in the earth. I know a lot of times moms put on um, Facebook, my first heartbeat, my second heartbeat, my whatever heartbeat. We are God's hand, his feet, his heartbeat in the earth, and he's using us to get his will done. He's helping us. He's propelling us. But we have to be willing vessels to pray and to go and to say, but in order to know where to go, what to say, we got to hear. Mm -hmm. And we have to have an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, my niece, Jaquay, she put something on Facebook today. It says, if you know how to talk, then you know how to pray. Amen. Because prayer is a conversation with God. And hopefully that's what you gained these last couple of weeks. How to conversate with God. How to pray for your family. How to pray for your loved one. How to pray for even your enemy. Amen. You know, but this is what we need right now. 
But not only do we need prayer, we need faith. We need to we need to have that relationship with God that's gonna increase our faith in God. Mm -hmm. in, increase our faith in God's ability. Increase our faith in God's power. That's why it says in Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is. Now faith is. Let me tell you something about faith. When you go going through, through trouble, it shows you your level of faith. Amen. You can't wait for the for the trouble to come and then want to get in faith. Already you know what I'm saying? Pastor you James, go ahead. When, when you was uh, praying, I know that what time it was or what night it was that you had the mustard seed mm -hmm. up there. Yeah, that was on the Sunday service last Sunday. So, so so we have no excuse. We have no excuse. Start with a little bit. Start with a little. That's so Start where you are. I mean, Amen. when the gas light come on, it's too late <laughs> on the highway to my two need gas, and the next gas station 50 is fifty miles away, and, and and your car telling you twenty five miles to empty, okay. you in trouble. You're trying to pray your way to the gas station. Yeah, <laughs> on a weed and a prayer. That's not faith. That's foolishness. God, when get when, that when you get listen, when you're in the storm. You gotta already have your faith built up to come out of the storm. Yeah. So you gotta, you know, stay there longer. Yes. You can call on Jesus just like people did in the storm. Yes. You you, yeah. yeah. You know, faith ain't there, but you, you, you try. You begin yeah, to try. Exactly. Oh, you Jesus. You gonna yeah. help me now? You gonna say now? Where's your faith later on? Yes. He said, Where's where your faith? faith? Well, he gonna help you. He might say, My grace it's is sufficient. Walk it out. Just walk it out. So. Amen. You have to build up your faith now. If, if, if you are not in a storm or coming out of a storm, a storm is coming your way. It's like this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord gave me this early. You don't wait a day before a hurricane comes to put up your shutters. Because you may find yourself short with, with supply. You don't wait till the day of the storm to try to go to the store because the store already closed. You got to be prepared before. Think about it. If you live in South Florida, you used to hurricanes. You know, if you live in the North, you know what happens during a snowstorm. You know, you know, blizzards are when they're coming. I mean, you don't wait for the storm to come to my, let me check my generator. You check all that before so that if the storm hits, you're prepared. You have to be prepared with faith when ain't nothing going on. That's when your faith needs to be the strongest. Because now what happens is when the storm comes or when the circumstances arises, when the issues come, you've been operating in faith so long, you don't even see this issue like everybody else sees it. What you see is this is. Oh, that's a light affliction. Why? Because my faith in God has already been prepared. My confidence in God is already at a different level. So when now that the storm has showed up, guess what? It don't shake me. It don't bother me. You know, people think uh, I just be joking sometimes. And when you know I say this a lot, I even said it in the church, they can lay me off. Because my faith is like this. If you lay me off, I'm going to be online by the time you get your paperwork dry. I don't apply for unemployment. I don't apply for food stamps. A food stamp for mold food. Give me the book with the purple, the brown, the green. Let me touch it. EBT Some of y'all know. No, I'm talking about pre-EBT. Before we even had that, because I'm talking about you got that book of food stamp from the food stamp. Who? Oh, the next day. I'm going to be within the same hour. I may even use that to do that work to go on to apply for my benefits. See, that Benny fits. You need to know. See, faith is a benefit of believing in God, of trusting in God. Yes, faith will sustain you, faith will carry you, faith will keep you. And then that faith is, is not, I'm not trying to muster up faith or believing that I can do or this, uh, you know, this, this, this thinking that's out there in the world okay. now, you know. Uh, um, I can believe I can do it. Now, I can believe I can do it. I can do all things through he Christ. Can do. He can do it. Who so the faith that I have is in God. The right. trust that I have right. is in God, right. not in my own ability. Not your own ability. See, let me tell you something. 
I tell anybody, as a pastor, don't put your faith and confidence in me. Because before I became a pastor, I was a human being. I was a man. I'm still a man. Put your faith, put your confidence in God. That's what the Bible tells us. I think it's Psalms 118. It tells you, put your confidence in God. You put all your hope, your trust, your aspiration, your dream. You put all that in God. Because I can't do that. I can I can only do what God has equipped me to do. You may have intentions on doing what you said you're going to do. Look, you know but firsthand. People don't let you down. They, mm -hmm. they had good intentions. They really meant it, what they said, but they were unable to do it. We have good intentions again. We can only do but so, so much. much. And sometimes God don't allow you exactly. to do certain things for people because he wants them to turn to him. Love but nobody. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord. And so your faith has to be in God. Amen. Now, let me tell you what God gave me for a definition of faith. He said, faith is confidence in my power and ability to operate in your life. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can have confidence in God's power and ability to operate in my life means I got to have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a relationship with God, then I don't have no confidence in him. I don't have no trust. I don't believe that he's able to do what he said he could do because I don't know him. I may know of him. Like I said, I think I said this Sunday. There's a difference between knowing God and knowing of God. See, people, some people only know me by Facebook. You don't know me. I used to tell people all the time. Somebody call me James. I know how you know me. You know me from, from a professional level. From a classroom setting or something. But now when you call me Tiger, oh, that's a whole nother category right there. So yeah, know. because now if you calling me Tiger, that means you from the muck. You from Bell Lake, South Lake, Pahokie, uh, Riddle, Runyon, Clawson, Lake Harbor, Streamline, Muck City. You know me. Because yes. you call me by something that a lot of people don't know or Facebook know. And now you calling me Tiger. Crazy. Yes. So we have a different kind of relationship than somebody who just on my job who I see, you know, when, when I'm at work, who I don't communicate with when it's work related. But 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 somebody who called me Tiger. I mean, when I worked in the school, you know, last year, I, last couple of years before I got promoted, uh, I had kids who would come and say, hey, uh, Tiger, my mama said that your name Tiger. I was like, oh Lord, what's your mama's name? Because your mama know me evidently. They don't they don't told you. Officer Wilson, yeah, we call him Tiger. Mm. See, that let me know something now that, oh, so you act up, I'm gonna call your mama. Because mm. now we're gonna have a different kind of relationship. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, See, God God has me in that. He has. Yes. So you gotta call on the one that you need. Now this Bible that I have, it has the names of God. In the front of him. Right now, if you need a healing, he's Jehovah Rophi. Mm -hmm. Yep, a healer. He's our banner, our strength. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to call on the president or the government for a stimulus check because God can stimulate what you have. He'll take your Ooh. little like and that. make it much. Amen. He can stimulate your bank account that only got that $5 in it to keep can it open. So? He can stimulate that. Yes, sir. Can I say so? She said, you see that God stimulate? Now, let me tell you something. You want to stimulate God? Give him thanks, give him a, 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 and praise yeah. for where you are right now. Amen. Stimulate God by thanking him and praising him for the blessing yeah. he provided you for this day. For giving you a clean out of breath. Yeah. You're not sick. You're not broken, disgusted. You're not living out on the streets. You know, you got a phone or a tablet or a computer. You got electricity yeah. to, to watch us right now. See, you are able to give God praise, give him praise, and stimulate God to want to do more and more for you because why? You appreciate him. Yeah. But then also, you take your appreciation for God, and you let that appreciation yeah. flow out to your brothers yeah. and sisters. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. That's true. And that scripture that says, it's very good, it's fine scripture, but I think it's in Ephesians. Somewhere in Ephesians, where it talks about don't worry, mm -hmm. you know, pray, pray, uh, you know, make your requests known to God. Yes, 
Don't be anxious about don't nothing. Don't worry about prayer, Philippians, 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 Philippians 4 and supplication. Mm -hmm. Make your request known to God. Mm -hmm. Prayer, supplications with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is what it says. I'm going to read it from Philippians 4, starting at verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. This is what she's saying here, verse number six. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. And then look at what it says in verse seven. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now see, sometimes I tell people, you know, I get to a red light. I know I'm driving that car that say police on the side and the back, got the light bulb on top. But sometimes I'm in the room just clapping my hand, giving God praise, thanking him. People probably think, what's wrong with him? Because they don't understand. They don't hear no music and nobody talking. It's just I just had something or else I just saw something and, and, and I want to give my God some praise. I want to stimulate my God. Because, see, I don't want him to take my breath yet. I'm about to be 50 in a few months. I need 50 more years. I ain't got my big front porch with my rocking chair yet. Yeah, well, she want to wrap around for it. But I'm just saying, you know, I want to stimulate God so that I want the devil to look at me just like he looked at Joe. Because you're not, you're not going to shake my baby. Oh man, he up again. You ain't gonna stop me from praying. You're not gonna stop me from preaching. And you sure ain't gonna stop me from loving people. Amen. So that's you know, my faith is in God. My faith is in what God has that's equipped true. me to do, called me to do. And you know, and I believe God greater is coming. Amen. Not only for my house, but your house. I believe greater is coming for everybody who's following me as I follow Amen. Christ. For everybody that connects to me as, hey, I connect to Christ. Hallelujah. Because, Cynthia, I see you, girl. Know that your gift is your breakthrough. Like I responded, your gift is your breakthrough. Because, Cynthia, next, what God has put in you, that's your breakthrough in this season right now. Hallelujah. All right, I'm, I'm going back wherever I was. Y'all pick it up. Y'all. I don't know. Right now, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I ain't never moved from verse one. We ain't put it. We ain't never left verse one. But seriously though, what God has placed on the inside of you, have faith for the impossible. And I'm not talking about material things. See, I I, I tell people at church. If you came up in here and you want to just sit down, but if God's speaking to me because you got a gift, I'm going to pull on it. See, God is pulling on you right now. He asking you, are you ready? And some of us, we scared. We scared to say, God, I'm ready. Use me. You operate in faith. You let God use you. Because, see, your gift going to make room for you. Your gift will take you to places where you can't go, where money can't even take you. Your gift will call you to sit among great men. This is for somebody right now. We ain't even talking about gifts, but somebody got a gift right now that God wants you to use to encourage people, to lift people up, to bless people, to do good to people. Right now, God has... Giving you a gift that you just got to step out on faith. You got to get out of that boat. And you're going to say, no matter what, I'm going to trust God. Stop saying you're scared. Stop saying you're shy. You're not. I'm going to tell you something. You're looking at two people. One on my left and one on my right. I'm shy. <laughs> you could have told them three months ago they're going to be here sitting here with me. You could have told them three months ago that last Wednesday that they're going to be doing this by themselves. Why? Because I'm going to keep encouraging what God has put in them to bring it forth. They're great speakers, great women of God. And there's a lot more great men and women of God 
who need to use the gift. Some of y'all are great prayer warriors. You're great intercessors, but you are afraid to you are afraid to step out and pray. You're scared to intercede, saying you don't know how. If if you've been with me for two weeks praying. At 7 15 in the morning or at 7 p.m., you know how to intercede, you know how to pray. God used me to teach you the same way He used somebody else to teach me. Amen. See, I don't got excited. I'm, I'm, I'm talking loud again. I can just feel it. I, I just get excited when it comes to talking about the things of God. Last Sunday, when when my niece prayed, I'm telling you, she she get nervous. But the first time I asked her to pray, she prayed. She, just say yes. Asked me to. I believe God has helped me do it. I'm watching people develop and grow in God, who's not afraid to step up. And then I'm watching God do things in their life because why? God is faithful. He is faithful. Let me tell you this, men and women of God. God is faithful. He's full of faith. If God calls you to it, you're going to do it. He's going to bring you through it. But not only is he going to bring you through it, when you're coming out, you coming out into a place where you've never been before. Amen. See, right now, there are some people, I know, Tammy, I don't know that the internet acting crazy tonight. There are some people who can't handle your blessing right now. They can't handle your gift right now. Not that you're too good, you're following a good God. So just stay faithful. Keep fighting a good fight of faith. And let God lead you and let God use you. See, God want to use you right where you are. In your job, in your neighborhood. You're a teacher, you got one of the greatest positions for God to use you. Because you got a captive audience five days a week. Whatever you do. You're a nurse, you got somebody who may be, you know, on a ventilator or whatever, they can't talk. But right now, you can intercede, you can lay hands on them when you go in there, and you can pray for them all day long and watch them recover in the name of Jesus and give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, that's so true. When you said that, it reminded me of when you were saying that some people don't have family members that can visit them, but God placed those nurses and doctors in yes. anesthesia, anesthesiologists, even the CNA spend more time yeah, the with the CNA and the doctors. And the, um, the hospitality team, the yes. people that come in the cafeteria, the janitorial staff, everybody that's going in, in there, God can still use you in that room to minister to that person. Yes. You don't have to be a pastor. No, we, we, all are, we all are ministers of the gospel. Yes. Yes, yes, we are. I mean, God will use a garbage man. Mm -hmm. He'll use whoever is yielded to him He'll to do that. his will and his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Because I'm going to tell you again. If he can pick me as much as I studied growing up, I know he'll use you too. So I'm just I'm just thankful. You know, faith, my I, I watch my faith growing and, and I'm still growing in faith. I got some things that I'm believing God for that I'm 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 believing that hey, it's right around the corner as I continue to do his will. Oh, it's right around the corner, Penny Hill Company Christian Center. Y'all probably know what I'm talking about. I'm believing God for it right now in the name of Jesus. Because what I want to do is going to blow a whole lot of people's mind, but I ain't going to put it out there. But I believe it's coming to pass and it ain't going to be long. Amen. 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 Um, I, I want to say be ready this week. You're going to be in some place that is not churchy. Mm -hmm. Like you may be walking in the grocery store, coming out of a restaurant. Somebody's going to ask you to pray for them. Someone is going to ask you to pray for them. And they're not talking about when you get home. Because you're going to say, okay, I'm going to pray for you. They're going to say, no, I need prayer right now. I know we're not supposed to touch hands, but we don't have to hold hands. But we can hold our hands up. You're going to be asked to pray for someone. Get yourself ready. What, what are you reading? What are you studying in your time with God? You better pull on your favorite scripture. You find yourself in that place. Pull yourself a favorite scripture down or some song you know you, you need to have some words. Somebody's going to ask you because they've been watching you and you've been talking about your God and they've been listening and they're going to need to hear God through you. Also, let me say this. Um, I apologize for the sound going out of time. Uh, but let me say this to you right here, right now. Um, 
What she just said has happened several times. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but people will see the presence of God all over you. Even strangers going to ask you to pray for them. Because it's not because you, to you, you're just you. But what they're seeing on you is greater than what you will ever see. Go ahead. Last week, I think I texted you guys and told you to pray. Minding my own business, trying to, you know, get my body in, in check here. Check. On the bicycle, riding, going down our street. And I had the earbuds in my ear, and I heard this piercing crying. One of the neighbors. So I took it out, and I'm like, first it startled me because it was loud, and it was a male cry. So I'm like, okay, what should I do? First, I was going to, honestly, I was going to continue to, to ride the bicycle because I'm thinking, okay, that's not my business. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to keep moving. Nothing. But the Holy Spirit said, no, turn around. I turned around, and I rode down the street. This is my sister's street. And it got louder. When I passed by the street, the door was open. So I really, I was battling now. I'm like, what should I do? Should I go in? Yeah, the first thought was go in. But then I had another thought said, no, you stay right here. So I went, went a little further down, got by the mailbox. And I just began to pray. I began to pray Psalms 91. Because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. And I just, at first, not, not to, I'm not going to lie. Fear gripped my heart because I'm like, you standing right here. The door is open. You don't know what's getting ready to happen. But then faith jumped in. You know, I'm believing the promises of God. I think we've been praying. We've been believing. So I'm like, okay, God, well, this is an opportunity for me to pray. I can't go in there. So I'm going to pray. I stood right there and I prayed. I called my sister. She didn't answer. So I said, I'm going to go back now. I prayed. I went down. I said, okay, I'm going to call 911 now. Getting ready to call 911. A car drove up. And the lady, she had on a mask and gloves. She said, okay, I'm going in. I said, oh, God, I thank you for sending help. So we have to be ready. And a lot of times we, if you can't, yes, if you, if you can't just, you know, be there or stand there and touch or whatever, you can pray. If you see somebody's in desperate need crying, I mean physically crying, you can you pray. Don't have to touch exactly. You can pray and ask God to touch and heal them and deliver them or whatever. He's praying the spirit. So whatever it is that they're going through, you can help lift that burden. Was that the um satirian soldier yeah, who, who told Jesus um, mm. his servant was ill mm -hmm. and he told you, you know, Lord, just speak the word. Just speak the word. Yes. I'm gonna make you you have many people under your authority yes. just as there's people under my authority. Yes. I don't even need you to come to my house. I need you to yes. speak. Because it, it can travel through. There are no boundaries mm -hmm. with what God can do. You mm -hmm. can speak the word of God and it can travel from state to state, country to country, mm -hmm. and around this world. So you don't have to physically be there Amen. to pray for your prayer to get the job done. Because the job will get done, but God needs us to open our mouth. And I think we said this earlier in the year in January that in this year, this season, this 2020, we're going to have to open our mouth and say, just like God spoke into existence, this world, when he said, let there be light, nobody said, wait a minute, we got to check with this person. We got to check with the government mm. officials. I need to call my mama. No, light just showed up. Amen. When God spoke, it happened. And if we are created, in his image and in his likeness and after his kind, we have creative ability too. But we have to have faith and believe that if your faith is not at that level, don't run out there trying to do nothing mm -hmm. that you saw your pastor do. Mm -hmm. You, know, that, you that, have that, to have faith. Three. Read what it says, Pastor Verse 3 in the Amplified. Well, let's read it in the King James. Okay. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are things which are seen were not made of things which are that which do appear. So the worlds were framed by the words that God spoke. God said, "Let there be," and there it was. So our world, speaking life, will be framed. Come on, it's going back, back to last week. Yes, yes, yes. Can I go back. I want to go back to prayer for one second. Sometimes God will put people in your heart to pray for them. Pick up the phone and call. Because you don't know what they're going through. And please don't, yes, please don't wait till later. Because when God put people in your heart, you need to do it immediately. I have um, um, 
one of my former students graduated a couple years ago. She's at FSU. Every now and then I call her to check on her. And God had put her on my heart for like about three days. I was just thinking about it. So I called her up and I talked to her yesterday. And I was checking on her just to make sure she was okay. And she had been going through some stuff and I ended up talking with her, giving her encouraging words and, and reminding her that if you ever need to talk, don't hesitate to call me. Don't you ever hesitate to call me. Why? Because I understand she's a young person going through her faith is not where mine is. So I, even though I know she know who God is, you know, we don't talk about God. She, she reads, was reading her daily scriptures. But sometimes we find ourselves in a position to where we may feel a little discouraged, a little down and out. And you calling somebody because God put them on your heart and your mind and you pray with them. You don't understand what it does for them. The same way if God puts you on somebody's heart and they call and say, hey, I'm just checking on you. I've been praying for you. Now I want to pray with you. How, how does that make you feel? You do the same thing when God is trying to use you or desire to use you to do that with somebody else. See, God is trying to use you, like the song say, bless somebody else. But blessing somebody else don't always mean you giving them something uh, physical, money or whatever. Blessing somebody else means you are empowering somebody else to be prosperous. You're praying for somebody. You're talking to somebody. You're encouraging somebody. You're helping to motivate them to keep the faith and fight the good fight of faith and build their faith by you showing them what faith is. So we have to Know that when God is using us to do something, go on and do it. Because I need y'all to pray for me. I, I'm, 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 I'm being serious. I need you to pray for me. Because I can tell you right now, the devil don't like me. He don't like me. Why? Because I'm not going to sugarcoat God's word. I'm going to try my best to encourage you through the word, to try to build up your faith through the word, to try to teach you how to pray, teach you how to confess the word. I'm, I, you know, I'm going to encourage you to use the gift that God has has given to you, not just sitting on the line, sideline. And let me speak on this. I'm going to close my Bible. I'm done with that. They can talk about it. When I say gifts, I'm not talking about the fivefold ministry gifts. I'm not talking about you being able to sing. Baby, if God gave you the gift the way you can bake a good cake, pound cake especially, you, you can get you some custom. This is your financial breakthrough that you've been talking right about. Now, look time. at how many people, look at how many business people have came out with this coronavirus. You know, everybody that got a sewing machine making masks. Amen. Amen. Some of them for five, eight, ten dollars. Some for twenty dollars. So therefore, God, that's what I'm talking about. Using your gift. Thank you. Why they never made a mask before? I already had them on the market. We have nurses, CNAs, doctors who need masks all the time. No one ever thought of Now, that. all of a sudden, you got people who making money doing what? Selling masks. Like mm -hmm. That's a gift. Right? Yeah, God, God gave them the gift to learn how to sew Amen. and to put things together. I may call on some of y'all, but I may want to start making a tailor-made outfit, a one-of-a-kind, just for me. And that you don't make it no more. But... It's still, it's a gift. See, that's what I'm talking about. Using your gift. And then with your gift, you use your gift to bless God. Because, see, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. If, if you make a mask, and I want a mask, first, my first, are you a Christian? Because what I want you to do is, I want you to pray over every mask before it goes out. So if you make a mask and you are a Christian, I need you to pray over each and every mask that you make before you release them. Pray for peace, healing, deliverance, blessing, favor, breakthrough, protection. Yeah. Pray for all of that over those masks before you send out or you Amen. give away another one. Before you sell another mask, you pray. And whatever your gift is, if you bake good, pray over it. You pray as you're making the gift. You know, make the gift in love. Make it, bake the cake in love. Yeah. And what you say? No angry food? No, no angry food. Well, I ain't gonna like you to make her angry food. If you don't want to do it, she said, don't do it. Well, you end up banging pots around. Nobody want to eat that. Because that ain't made in love. And not just for profit. And, exactly. So, there ain't nothing wrong with profit. 
But the thing about it is, when you're doing it, you're doing it to help somebody, and you need help as well. But a lot of times, it's 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 the heart behind what yeah. you do. Yeah. A lot of it, don't just pray on it and say you're praying on it because you think it's gonna Amen. be believed. Amen. Amen. Because God knows the heart. Amen. So if you're gonna pray on it, you're praying on it because your heart is to pray for the people that's gonna come in contact with it. Just like who was that Peter that uh, took clothes, handkerchief, mm -hmm. and and and, and, and um, yep. he prayed over them, and, and people were healed. Getting healed. So that's a form of contact. So when they're taking those cloths and they're taking those masks or whatever it is that you're creating during this time, you pray over those things. And you, when you're praying, you're making your request known to God, whatever you, whatever your needs are, while you're sending it out. But you're giving thanks to God for the people that's gonna, you know, come along and Amen. be blessed by it. Amen. You know, I have a little short definition of, of faith. Go ahead. Because I was talking to somebody years ago, and I was giving the biblical definition. Faith is, a, faith is a substance of things hoped for, blah, 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 blah. So the old man said, well, baby, that's good. He said, but you know, how, you know how I define faith? He said, believing without sin. I'm like, that's it. That's it. Believing without seeing. Believing without believing seeing. Believing without seeing. So what I put on it, my little touch, I say believe in God's promises before they manifest. Amen. I'm trusting God well, before they manifest. We believe coronavirus out there and we can't see it. Amen. So why we can't believe that the healing is on the way, that God is healing? Because you why? see manifestation. Because we, can, we have seen manifestation. Amen. Why can't we believe in Genesis to Revelation? Mm. Believe what the word says. Believe mm -hmm. the promises. Well, that's all I got. So we have no, I know this wasn't the way we normally do Bible study. We don't went several twist. different ways and yes, it's different with a twist, but I do have a couple of announcements to make. Um, you're welcome there, Philomena Chance. Good to see you. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, we will be back. I will be praying again uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook on, on this channel at 7 o'clock um, and Friday morning at 7.15 uh, Friday morning is, is going to be my last prayer uh, that I do until my week of fasting. I ask some of y'all to join me in fasting and praying beginning the last Sunday uh, of the month. Uh, the reason why I'm taking a, a break is because I want I want to consecrate myself and just spend time with God. You know, just spend time, just me and God praying, talking, whatever. So when I do do this seven days uh, of fasting with those who have agreed to stand with me, um, for more than just coronavirus, I'm believing God for some impossible things for me, for you, and for others, uh, children of faith. But I need to spend time with God, and also I need to rest my uh, throat, my vocal cords, because I have been praying. But I'm still going to be praying for you. I'm just not going to be on Facebook uh, doing that. And um, so, I, but I need you now. I need you beginning Friday, standing in the gap. If you're not already doing it, praying for me that God continue to give me strength to do what he called me to do. You know, um, this is not always easy, but I will say it's always pleasing. Mm -hmm. I am always happy and excited to do what God has called me to do, you know, to do his will, because it's not about me, it's about him. I don't want no glory except for the glory that he gives me. I want you to glorify him because of what he's doing through me. So, um, so I'll be back praying 7 o'clock tomorrow, 7 p.m., Friday morning at 7 p 7 15 a.m. And then we will be having our Sunday morning worship service um, this Sunday at 9 a.m. This station's uh, same channel, just at 9 a.m. Sunday morning. And for those of you who have been faithful, I just want to say thank you. thank you. Just know that I love you, we love you, and it's a truly, it's an honor to serve you with God's word and what he's doing. And I really want to hear some testimonies of what God is doing in your life since we've been doing this. And uh, yes, and, and hey, and what I'm going to ask you to do is you continue to pray. You pray at 7 o'clock in the evening. You pray um, at, at, at 7.15 or 7 in the morning or whatever. But I'm just trying to get prepared for what God is preparing me to do from that Sunday evening at 7 p.m., until that Saturday morning after we do uh, our corporate prayer that first Saturday. Because I'm praying for God's will to be done. And uh, I don't want nobody lost that's, that's walking with me in this, that's walking with us as we walk through this together. 
I don't want to lose nobody to anything. Car accident, virus, germ, nothing. I want God to protect you because you got something inside of you and God is just using us to make deposits into you so that your cup will be full so that you can overflow into somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I have. Um, well, y'all mind closing us out of prayer unless y'all got something y'all want to add. Lift your hands with me in prayer as a sign of submission to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, O oh God, that your word is moving and working right in our own homes, and then we're taking it out to the world. We thank you, O oh God, that we are loving our neighbors as ourselves, God. We thank you that we're loving those first responders. We're loving those people who are the essential workers. We're loving those who may even feel non-essential to us, God. Give us the strength to love them. Show us how to love them. Show us how to use our gifts, God, to advance your kingdom, to show your love strong in this world, God. We thank you and we give you praise. We give you honor, God. We thank you for this man of God tonight, oh God. We ask that you rest your peace, your love, your grace, and your mercy, your compassion upon him, God, so that he will continue to do your will and your good pleasure. Touch everyone that is listening live by Facebook, those who are here on replay, God. We ask that you touch them right now, touch them in their physical bodies, touch them in their spirit, their mind, their soul, their intellect, touch them in their families, God. If those who are having to go to work, God, send the angels before them, God, to minister on their behalf, to war on their behalf. God, I declare that your super is placed on our natural. God, supernatural things will happen this week, starting right now, God. We believe you, God. We're going to develop a more intimate, personal relationship with you, oh God. We're going to make room for you, God. We're moving everything out of the way. Whatever's in your way, oh God, we ask that you remove it right now. Move it over. Move over our social media time. Move over our jobs. Move over those people who are in the way. Move over what we deem is right and what we want to do, God. And we submit and humble ourselves right before you, God. We lay out prostrate before you, oh God, and we cry out to you, Abba, Father. Help us, Lord God. Help us to be the people you called us to be, to do your will and your good pleasure. God, we're forever grateful for you. We lift our hands in honor of you, oh God, and we just thank you for continued prayers and continued breakthroughs in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Good night, everybody. All right, uh, Facebook, on the behalf of Pastor myself, Pastor James, Pastor Sabrina, Pastor Angela, our Thank families, you. and the Pineal Covenant Church Center, Church Center family, we Amen. say good night. Good God night. bless you. We love you. Peace. <laughs>